In the screencast I'm going to show you how to extract surfaces from DICOM data and then write these surfaces away as STL files uh, that you could uh, also use for rapid prototyping for example. So first we have to load our DICOM data. I here have the pelvis from the Osirix collection. Osirix you can find by googling for Osirix data. As per usual I just select all DICOM files and drag and drop them onto the divide canvas. These are 355 files and then divide create the DICOM reader. I'm not going to use this one right now to read because these files are all compressed and it takes longer than usual. What I have done is to prepare for you um, a data set, the same data set that I've already loaded so that we can start more quickly. So there we go, this is the data. You can see here uh, that it indeed is a pelvis. We have on this side, the left, the right, the front and the back. And you can see here on the right hand side, there's something clearly not very right. So there's a big fracture there uh, in the hip. So what we need to do now is to try and extract surfaces describing uh, the right side of the hip. We'll try and do it as quickly as possible. So first thing to try with CT data is a double threshold or a data threshold in any case. So what I do is I connect it up like this and then like that and through prior experimentation I know now that a good threshold for this is 250 to 3000. Let's just see what that looks like. There we go. I've captured most of the bones and well some speckling in between but I'm not too concerned as I'm going to use a 3D region growing but just to show you how one would experiment to find good values you can bring up the dialog box of the double threshold over here and change the value and then either click on execute or press alt E I press, press alt E and I can immediately get feedback on what the threshold value um, does so I'll just go back to 250 and I get my bones back and now I'm going to choose a seat point somewhere there for example there we go and I'm just storing that you can see there's a marker placed there now without a name okay so I'm going to use this region grower called seed connect so I connect the point I've just selected that's the first output of the slice 3D viewer connect that to the second input you can see what it requires by just hovering over the port and then the status bar will tell you what that port is for I put the output of the threshold module into the input there and then disconnect the double threshold from the viewer and connect the output of the seed connect so I can see what it does F5 to execute and there we go so it's selected out only the right side of the pelvis or at least the, the bony voxels on the right hand side so now I'm going to clean that up a bit by using a closing and I just use the default structuring elements there we go Let's connect that up there and exactly the same procedure disconnect the seed or the region grower and connect the output to the closing execute everything so it updates first it does a dilation followed by an erosion on the complete 3D data set. There we go, and we can see it's looking a lot better. See? It's not perfect yet, but it's good enough for this demonstration. We merely want some nice descriptive outside surfaces. Okay, so first things first thing we need to do is to extract an ISO surface. And I do that with this contour module. So we know that we're working with label data, zeros and ones. So to make a nice enclosing surface, we choose an ISO value of 0 0.5. So the ISO surface at that value is extracted, and I can visualize that by also just connecting it to the slice with the viewer and pressing F5 to update. There we see the surface, and you immediately notice that it's quite complex. Well, I notice that at least in the, in the interaction lag I'm seeing here, and we can also see that the lighting is not perfect due to, that the, due to the normals not being, uh, not being calculated yet. Just to give you an idea of the complexity of that surface, I use a quick info module, connect it up right there, and I can see that there are 843,000 triangles in data sets, so no wonder it's a bit sluggish. So let's go and first smooth the data. I, I want to simplify it, but by smoothing it we get better, uh, smoothing it first we get better simplification results. My favorite smoother is the windowed sink, uh, the windowed sink smoother. VTK window sync polydata filter and connect that up and see what that looks like. See the window sync polydata filter and the result looks like this. Already much better. 
okay but still quite complex still the same number of triangles so let's go and simplify that with a VTK quadric decimation standard VTK filter we go like there and let's see the target target reduction is 90 percent we won't know if it reaches that but we'll do a good job there you go connect that up and it's doing its simplification just give it a few more seconds and it's done okay let's load that up look much faster let's see what the reduction was I have to bring back my quick info you can see it's down to 84,000 so in fact it did get rid of 90% of the polygons and yet the surface still looks pretty nice okay let's write the surface away as an STL file that was the whole point of this exercise so to do that I pick an STL writer, the native divide one connect up this output configure my writer as always by double clicking on the module and then saying we can write that as well there we go left heap.stl I'll just overwrite this previous one so it's there it went and writ wrote it so now I'm going to load that STL file using a program called MeshLab and there we go MeshLab is loading the data and there you can see I just fit this into my capture area you can see that MeshLab also seems to think that this is valid STL very good okay so that was uh, is the end of the screencast showing how to extract a surface from a DICOM dataset and write it away as an STL file that you could use in a rapid prototyping application uh, thank you very much for watching